Now, this textbook says, humans probably evolved from bacteria that lived more than 4 billion years ago. Folks, they can swim 60 miles an hour. The fastest human swimmer can go about 4 or 5 miles an hour. Through water. You need to sign these guys up for the Olympics, man. We're getting worse, not better. Bacteria are incredibly complex. Complexity demands a designer, whether you like it or not. They tell the kids, yes, life evolved from non-living material. Look at this one. The Bible says God created the living creature. The textbook says the history of life began on earth 3.5 billion years ago. How this occurred has been and will continue to be a topic for inquiry. Let me give you the Hovind translation. It's okay to inquire how life evolved. It is not okay to inquire if life evolved. That's what they're trying to say to the kids, isn't it? Hey, kids, it's okay to do research on how we evolved, but don't you dare question the fact that we did evolve. Not only can kids not uh, pray in school, they can't even think in school anymore. Miller and Urey wanted to know how the Earth and solar system had come to be. So they made an experiment 50 years ago. It said he never proved how life originated. But he did add evidence to the theory that life could have started by itself. This is a lie. Miller and Urey's experiment, and everybody since then, has made the problem much worse. See, Darwin thought a cell in your body was a little simple sack of jelly. Now we know cells are incredibly complex, and life could not have started by chance. Um, the origin of species was not addressed in 1859 and is still a mystery in 1998. Both the origin of life and the origin of major groups of animals remains unknown. They don't know how life got started. But the textbooks will tell the kids, Life got started from non-living material. This one says, many important events occurred during the Archean era, the most important of which was the evolution of life. Progress from complex molecules to the simplest living organism was a very long process. Oh, yeah, let's put time in there. That'll help. This textbook says, the first self-replicating, or first living cells emerged between 4 billion and 3.8 billion years ago. There is no record of the event. <laughs> we know what happened, kids, and you're going to be tested on this, but uh, there's no proof. He says, the first self-replicating systems must have emerged in this organic soup. That's a lie. There's no proof of, from any field of science of how life got started from non-living material. Now, if you want to believe it evolved, you just enjoy yourself, but don't call it science and don't tell people you know how it happened. Nobody does. Haeckel, during his confession at the G University of Jena, said, he, spontaneous generation must be true, not because it had been proven in the laboratory, but because otherwise it would be necessary to believe in a creator. Oh, you're right about that, Ernie. Must have been a creator. So a question. Have scientists really produced life in the laboratory? Here's the experiment they did. Miller and Urey took gases. They took methane, ammonia, water vapor, and hydrogen, circulated them through some glass tubes, and ran a spark in there whoosh, to say this is like lightning. At the bottom, some red goo developed, and so they filtered it off and saved all the red goo at the bottom of the flask. They said the goo is rich in amino acids. This is a lie, okay? It was not rich in amino acids. It's interesting to notice they excluded oxygen from the experiment. They didn't want any oxygen in there because they knew if they had oxygen, anything they created would oxidize. You know, you cut the banana open, lay it on the table, it turns brown, it oxidizes. If you don't paint your car, it oxidizes. It's called rust. They didn't want any oxygen there because it would destroy any life that evolved. The problem is, if you don't have oxygen, you can't have ozone. And ozone blocks UV light, and UV light destroys ammonia. And ammonia is one of the gases. So if you don't have oxygen, life can't evolve. And if you do have oxygen, life can't evolve. <laughs> Got a real serious problem here. And by the way, the Earth has always had oxygen. Even if you believe the dumb geologic column, the lowest layers have oxygen. This guy says, what, evidence, what is the evidence for a primitive methane ammonia atmosphere? The answer is there is no evidence for it and much against it. In general, we find no evidence in the sedimentary distribution of the rocks of oxygen-free atmosphere. Don't let them tell you. That's true. But this textbook says, yes, boys and girls, back when there was no oxygen, 0% oxygen, the rocks absorbed it. Say, what? There was no oxygen, but the rocks absorbed it. <laughs> the cheese done fell out of their sandwich, man. I'm telling you, that elevator don't go all the way to the top. And then two billion years after the origin of life, there was enough oxygen to support the eukaryotes. Oh, ah, slowly evolved to today. This is pure propaganda. 
What he, Miller did in his experiment, and Yuri, and everybody since, they filter out the product they produce. This is not realistic for nature. What they actually made was 85% tar, 13% carboxylic acid. Both of those are toxic to life. Now, if you make an experiment that's 98% poisonous to the other 2% you're trying to make, would you say that's a success? Actually, what he generally made was two amino acids. There are 20 necessary for life. He made basically two in a poisonous mixture. He filtered out the product. That's not realistic. What the, he made this amino acids, but they will bond with the water and the tar and the acid much quicker than they will bond with each other. Amino acids are sort of like letters of the alphabet. You know, there are 26 letters in the English alphabet. With combining those 26, you can make all kinds of words if you get them in the right order. You can also just drop letters and make a whole bunch of nonsense stuff too, you know. He made a few amino acids. It's like making a few letters of the alphabet. There are 20 amino acids required to make proteins. He just made a few of them. These amino acids are like letters. It takes a bunch of them to make paragraphs. It takes a whole bunch of them to make a book. And to make one living cell takes trillions of these amino acids in precise order. Half of what he made was right-handed, half were left-handed amino acids. This creates a real problem because the smallest proteins have about 70 to 100. Maybe there's one less, I don't know. Uh, but all are left-handed. The smallest DNA all have, and DNA and RNA all have right-handed. It's called the chirality. He made a mixture. It's not going to work. They will unbond in water much faster than they bond. And as far as anybody knows, the oceans are completely full of water. <laughs> and Brownian motion is going to drive them apart, not bring them together. The experiment was a fraud. It's a lie. It's a fake. It didn't, didn't work. Don't let them tell you they made life in the laboratory because they never came close. Somehow they get this idea, though, that all you've got to do is get all the molecules together and add energy, and it'll make life. Okay, well, then let's do a science experiment. Let's put a frog in a blender and turn it on. In just a few moments, you will have frog nog. <laughs> you will have all of the energy required to make a frog, all of the molecules required to make a frog in one place. Right? Now we're going to add energy. Put it on puree. <laughs> Leave it on for a million years. Nuke it, microwave it, zap it with jumper cables. I don't care what you do to it. How long will it take to reassemble the frog? <laughs> it ain't going to work, is it? No. We don't have a tree of life. They put this in the textbooks like, yes, boys and girls, humans evolved from bacteria billions of years ago. It's in all the textbooks. This is pure propaganda value. That's what it's in there for. There's no evidence for any of it. Even Mary Leakey said, those trees of life with the branches of our ancestors are a lot of nonsense. Stephen Gould said, the evolutionary trees that adorn our textbooks are not the evidence of fossils. They make this stuff up. It's imagination. This textbook says, all the many forms of life on Earth today are descended from a common ancestor found in a population of primitive unicellular organisms. There's no such thing as a primitive unicellular organism. And then it says, no traces of those events remain. Yes, boys and girls, we know what happened, but there's no proof. Mm -hmm. This textbook says the humans, the birds, and the crocodiles have a common ancestor. Isn't that the impression they're trying to get across? Look, folks, everything inside that circle is pure religious speculation, not science. They might want to believe that, but that's not science. It's a lie. It's based on pure imagination. Anybody that teaches that is in trouble when they stand before God. Jesus said, if you destroy a child's faith, you're in serious trouble. Read Matthew chapter 8.